So I want to take a minute now just to introduce Python and talk about Jupyter Notebooks, a tool we're going to use to write our Python code. So Python is a general purpose programming language, and it has several libraries for stats, like NumPy and SciPy, which is what we'll talk about. And it's used often for data science and AI. It's really the most popular language for it. Okay, and we also want to talk about Jupyter Notebooks. So Jupyter Notebooks, you can think of them as like a combination between a document and your computer code. It kind of mixes those two, those two things together. And you'll see when we look in a code notebook that there's places to write text or markdown and places to put our code. We separate those two things. And one of the nice things about this is that you can use the text to explain your analysis further and to kind of give more context or background, maybe to add recommendations or other thoughts. It's a, it's a great way to come up with a really nice report. And these are becoming very popular in analytics. Now, we're going to use a tool called Google Colab, which is essentially a free cloud-based Jupyter Notebook. Uh, you don't have to install anything, and files get stored on your Google Drive. So Google Colab is the tool we're going to primarily use to write our Python code. Again, it's essentially a Jupyter Notebook. It's just in the cloud rather than your own desktop. So now let's dive in and write some Python code. And we're going to do it in Google Colab, which, remember, is essentially a Jupyter Notebook in the cloud. So a Jupyter Notebook can be a mix of text and code, which can give us a really cool report. So in the Jupyter Notebook, you're going to see different cells. And again, those cells can be one of those two things, code or text. Now, if we want to add additional cells into our notebook, we're going to use this plus code or plus text button. And there's also, if you kind of scroll over us existing cell, you'll see those buttons above and below it, which allow you to add um, additional cells that way. So I'm going to double click on my text cell here and try to make some updates to it. And as I do, what I'll be able to add are, are bold um, formatting, italics, bullet points, and so on. I can also use this notation to designate a header. And if I add more, it'll change the size of it, essentially. Now, as I start writing this, what I'll see on the right-hand side is what the output can be expected to look like. Okay, And then once I've got the text the way I want it, I've written what I want, I'm going to hit shift enter and it's going to execute that cell of text. Looks like a normal Word document now. Now let's take a look at a code cell. In this first code cell, what I've done is I've just added a comment. It's an important practice in really any programming language to add comments to your code to explain what it's doing. So if you don't look at the code for a few months, you can look at this comment and remember what it does. Or it's helpful if you share it with someone else so they can understand what you're doing. Now, it's not actually really Python code that we're going to execute. It's just background information. And so if I run this cell of code, and I can do that using the plus button or hit control enter, nothing will be produced as an output. It's just a comment, nothing really to execute. Down below that, though, on our next cell of code, we're going to build our first program. And so what I've done is just added a comment to designate that. And we're going to use an action or a function called print to display text or a string, as we call it. Okay, so when I run this, I'm going to hit Control Enter. And I'll see that print, that function, is going to display the text that I've provided as an input. Hello, world. Now let's talk about variables. So variables are important really in any programming language. What they're going to do is store data inter information, and it's going to allow us to easily refer to it later, and to work with it. So let's say we have a variable x and y. In x, we're going to put a number, 354, because it's a number we don't need quotations. But y will be text or a string, and so we're going to put quotations around that, and it's going to be customers. So I've got that information stored in those variables. And I can refer to it using the variable names later, x or y. So now that we've created them, let's print it. We're going to print x, which in the output, once I run this, it should say 354, not x. And when I use print x, comma y, it should print both of those, 354 and customers, so 354 customers. So I'm going to try to run this. And there we go. That's perfect. So I see 354 and 354 customers in the output. Now, just as a note, there could be another way to write things like this, where you put two of these variables together, you print them together. Um, you might see x plus y, 
it won't work in this case. You want to use x comma y because if you put x plus y, it's going to generate an arrow because it's going to expect the same data type. So you're working with different data types here. One is a number or an integer, and another is a text string. And so it's going to, we want to do it uh, using a comma there. Now let's uh, talk a little bit more about different types of data. We just mentioned a minute ago numbers or integers and also uh, text strings. We've got lots of possible data types. These are just some of the most common. So um, in this case, this is a text string. We're going to put these in quotations. Maybe we'll store that in A. 5 is an integer, essentially a whole number. And a float includes a decimal, 5.5. Now we're going to talk about lists. Okay, it's a list of items. Harry, Ron, and Voldemort. There's three items in that list, all stored in this one variable. Or we're going to talk about also dictionaries. So what we're going to say in this case is we're going to have name, and then we're going to provide it a name, Harry in this case, and an age, and it's going to provide, we're going to provide 15 there. So notice there's this colon to designate different things in the dictionary, and then a comma to separate them, okay? And then there's also a Boolean, which is essentially just true or false, it's binary. So those are some of the common data types that we're gonna be working with. Now what we can do is we can specify data types if we want to do that. Like we typically when we feed it in information, Python is gonna be pretty good about detecting the data type, but maybe we don't wanna use whatever the default is that they're gonna designate for us. So say let's say, we, let's say we have 15, and uh, we're gonna store uh, 15 in X and Y. So if we use INT in front of it, it's gonna make sure that X is stored as an integer. It's gonna do that by default anyway, but, but if we actually want, instead of it being read in as a number, we want it to read in as a text string, we can use str for string and put 15 after it. Now, a way to check to see if this actually worked, if like x is an integer, a number, and y is a string, it's text, we can print out their types, their variable types. Okay, so I'm gonna try to run this. I'll hit control and enter. And I see the x is an integer and the y is a string. So that worked. Um, actually specifying the data type work in that case. Something else to notice or to note about variables here is that they are case sensitive. So lowercase x is not the same thing as uppercase x. You can store different things in those. And then variables are easy to read when you use things like snake case. So total underscore customers rather than missing that out. Okay, you could also use camel case, but uh, I prefer snake case. All right, now let's talk a little bit more about strings, text strings, and the things that we can do with them. So let's say that we have a variable called z and we're gonna store this text string inside of it, spam musubi. So we've got z with this text string in it. We could do a bunch of stuff with that. Okay, and I'm actually gonna run this so we can look at the results as we're walking through this. Okay, I'm gonna run it there. And printing it is just gonna print the string print Z. Um, what we can also do is within the string, designate a specific character. Now, when we're designating one here, it's actually gonna print the second character because it starts as zero. If we use zero, it's gonna print the first character. So you see down below, it's printing P because of the second character, even though we're seeing one there, it could be a little bit confusing. And then we can use LEN or length to print the number of characters. In this case, it's 11 is how many characters we have in the text string. You can also create an upper case version of it using upper, so z dot upper, and it's gonna uppercase all of that for us. You can also use replace to replace something in it. So if we were to replace sp with j, when we printed that, we'd get jam musubi. Also, and similar to upper replace, we can try something called is numeric. So if we want to check to see if, if a variable is numeric, we can do it that way. And obviously it's not numeric, so it's going to return false there. 
Another cool thing that we can do with strings is search for information. And I know this is a small string right now, but maybe it's a lot bigger. And what we want to do is print um, if we see this spam in Z. If we see that text inside the variable, we're going to say true. If we don't, it's going to be false. Obviously, spam is inside of that string in Z, and so it's going to print out as true. Now let's talk about different operators to perform some calculations. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this so we can talk about the results here as we go through this. So obviously to add, you're going to use the plus. Subtract, you're going to use subtract, obviously. To multiply, you're going to use asterisks. 10 times 5 is going to be 50. Division, you're going to use that slash. And for exponents, you're going to use two asterisks, okay? Two of those, so 10 to the power of 5. Now, there's also some additional built-in math functions, and just this is a couple examples here. You can use something like a min and feed it in various numbers to find the minimum, and you can use max to find the maximum of a set of numbers. Okay, obviously the min is 50 and the max is 100. Now let's talk a little bit about Booleans and comparisons too. So if we're making comparisons, we can do it this way. So if we want to see if 100 is greater than or equal to 50, we designate it that way. And then if we want to check to see if they're equal to each other, we're actually going to use two equal signs. We're saying 100, is it equal to 50? True or false? And another way, or a way to say that it, is it not equal, is to do it this way. Okay, an exclamation point and then equals. So what we should see is that this is true. We're evaluating this condition or comparison, and it's going to produce true. In the second case, it should be false. They're not equal to each other. And in this third check or comparison, that should be true because they are not equal to each other. You can also do this with strings. So if we want to say if one text string is equal to another, you can check it that way. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run this and just confirm that it gives us the results we expect. Yep. Okay, so we've got those comparisons, and those are ways that we can do that. Now, a couple other things to finish this out is we want to talk about indentation. So in Python, indentation is significant. It's used to designate or specify a block of code. Now, we're going to talk about if statements later, but in the if statement, we're going to evaluate a condition, and then if that condition is met, we're going to, in this case, print something, print true. Now, because these sort of go together, we're going to indent the next line, and if we didn't, Python perhaps would give us an error there. It's looking for indentation, uh, and there's significance to that. And we'll talk more about that in this scenario when we get to if statements. Now, finally, to kind of finish out or round out our basics topics here, we want to talk about Python libraries and how to import those. So essentially, libraries sort of allow us to do additional things in Python. It's additional code that, that people have created uh, that makes um, things more efficient for us in many cases. So if we want to import a Python library that we want to work with, to, again, to make our lives easier, we're going to use import. Okay, And we're going to talk about NumPy. We're going to import NumPy or NumPy as NP. And that's how, when we want to use things in that library, we're going to, um, that's how we're going to designate such. Okay, so we're going to use NP. So we want to use, when we want to use this Python library or a function inside of it, we want to make sure we use that alias NP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of this library and one of the functions inside of it called a range, and then I'm going to print. Okay, so it's creating an array and then printing it. 